Eh, Arrachal de Angustio, eh, thank you to everyone for giving me the opportunity to share this panel with people who I admire. Good afternoon from New York. I am a writer. I arrived in New York with my family in 2018, thanks to a writing fellowship from the New York Public Library. The fellowship ended up and now I am a writer in residence at the New York University. So we are migrants, a migrant family. Like Basques all, of, of all times, we are in the United States searching for new opportunities. Shortly after we arrived in New York, we visited Ellis Island. There, my wife Nerea looked up the names of two of her grand grandfathers. Both migrated to the US in the early 20th century, Grandpa Lorenzo and Grandpa Jose. They both served as shepherds in Idaho. Even though they were from the same village, Marquina, they didn't know each other. They met each other here in a very singular way. Lorenzo was in the fields with his sheep when he heard a shot. He approached to the origin of the shot, curious to know what had happened. Then he found Jose, lying on the ground in a puddle of blood. Lorenzo saved his life. Years later, they returned to the Basque country and remained friends, so close friends that the two daughters of the one married to the two sons of the other. <laughs> I imagine this generation arriving in the Jews, landing in a different country after a long journey in a country with a different culture, a language that many of them had never heard before. The uncertainty of not knowing if they would ever go back again. The loneliness of leaving back the family and friends. The Basque country is small, surrounded with mountains. There was not enough land for everybody. Not so long ago, the Mayorazgo was, rule, was ruling our Baseris, and only the big brother stayed home, while the rest of the siblings were migrants. Don't forget it. A, call, a, a couple of years ago, I was at a literary festival in Arequipa, Peru. In the monastery of Santa Catalina, the sculptures of the saints had wigs made of nuns' hair. And they were blonde, blonde wigs. A guide told me that the hair belonged to, to Basque nuns who migrated to Peru. We, Basque, are migrants. All migrants built a community. They built a family to find protection, support, and comfort their homesickness. They built such a strong community that cultural transmission has been preserved until nowadays, in some cases, with much more care than in the Basque country. Sometimes, I wonder if we have paid enough attention to the Basque diaspora, if we haven't been focusing indoors, pretending that we are the only ones that can offer something to the Basque community. I have learned that identity is a strong word when you are a migrant. A migrant. Belonging to a certain community replaces the core needs of the large family and friends. I would like to say that the being Basque is not a demonym that belongs to some determined geographical boundaries. Basque people are in the world. It is spread through the Basque communities around the world, in Argentina, in the United States, Mexico, because Basque country is not just in the Basque country. Let me tell you the story of Elizabeth Macklin. Elizabeth was born in Poughkeepsie in the 50s. In the 90s, I used to write a column for the Basque paper Euskaldunon Egunkaria, 
And in some Euskaltegis, my writings were used as study material. One day, I received a call from the AEK Euskaltegi from Santuchu. Apparently, a student wanted to meet me, and I could not say no. This is how I met Elizabeth Macklin, the most incredible translator that I had could ever have. A person who once felt curiosity to learn Basque, the old European language that she once heard of. What she was discovered while she was navigating through the learning process made her fall in love with the Basque culture. And of course, now she wears a laburu in her necklace and she runs the Corica every two years. And I am sure people in this Zoom call have met different Elizabeth Macklins in their lives. People so committed to the Basque culture that if we have to classify them in the four groups that John Flesher proposed on Tuesday, they would belong to the movers and shakers. So who are Basques? People who are born in the six Basque provinces, of course, but also descendants of Basque migrants. And then the new Basques, like Elizabeth, Basque is the one who wants to be Basque. Ident uh, identity is, uh, sorry, identity is not just one. You can be Japanese and Basque or American and Basque, if you want to. It, it is always better adding and not removing. Inclusion instead of exclusion. Empathy instead of hate. The Basque language introduced Elizabeth to the Basque environment. As John Flesher mentioned it on Tuesday, our language is a hot topic in many circles, in many circles. People fall in love with the Basque language, maybe because it, it's antiquity or maybe because of the mysteries of its origin, who knows? Through all these years, Basque language has been an example of resilience. Euskera has been alive for thousands of years and has managed to overcome from difficult situations. It was forbidden, prosecuted, however, it is still alive. This is the result of the effort of the civil society. Thousands of people have contributed to preserve our language. Euskera is a treasure that we offer to the world. Are Kenyan elephants just from Kenya? Or do they contribute to the biodiversity of the world? As the for, are the forests of the Amazon just Brazilian? Or do we all breathe oxygen that is coming from there? UNESCO, in its Universal Declaration on Cultural, cultural Diversity, promotes the cultural diversity as necessary for humankind as biodiversity is for nature. Our contribution to the biodiversity of the world is the Basque language. Basque people believe in a better world. The Basque society is a progressive society that works for human rights. A society that fights inequality and injustice, a society that stands close to minorities. In fact, we also belong to the group of minorities. Nerea, the kids and me, visited recently the Jewish Museum in New York. What is being Jewish? The artist Adam Horowitz wanted to answer that, that question. Inspired in the work 10 Portraits of Jewish of the 20th century of the artist Andy Warhol, Horowitz covered the walls with 99 portraits of Jewish from the century. We found portraits of Albert Einstein, Leonard Cohen, Rosa Luxemburg, Elizabeth Taylor, 
Hannah Arendt and the, and the Marx Brothers too. His intention was to make the Jewish community feel part of the achievements that a member of their society has accomplished. The following room showed pictures of the fight for rights of African Americans, Native Americans, feminists, LGTB+, and all of them communities who have not been considered in the past and now are raising their voices. We, Basques, are on, we are on the bright side of the earth among those who want a more human world. But where are the Basque, Albert Einstein, Elizabeth Taylor, and Leonard Cohen? We also have great artists, scientists, thinkers, and sports women. We just need to make them more visible. We have well-known prescribers. The philosopher Yehuda Halevi was Basque. The religious Ignatius Loyola was Basque. The queen Joanna Albrecht was Basque. The sailor Juan Sebastián Elcano was Basque. The illustrate Dominique Garat was Basque. The musician Maurice Ravel was Basque. The designer Cristóbal Valenciaga was Basque. The politician Dolores Ibarruri was Basque. The, sculpt the sculptor Jorge Oteiza was Basque, and the astronaut Leopold Ehart is Basque. We need visibility. We need to put together all the good values that our culture can offer to the world. Be known as Basques. Identify the features that make the Basque unique. Scotland, Ireland, Japan. We are able to recognize these countries with a few features that have been associated to these cultures. We need something similar. In some of the New York, New York grocery stores, I have found a delicious cheese branded as Basque cheese. Every level of cheese from Iparralde is branded as Basque cheese and not French. Basque, and people from New York buy them because they are Basque, and of course, because they are delicious. <laughs> but there is a brand, there is a brand. As a writer, I'm trying to make my works more international from here, from New York. Martina Muller mentioned on Tuesday that the best Irish artist live in USA, in the USA. I found this in information very interesting. Why does that happen? Do they get more support in the US? Do they feel more freedom to create here? Is the culture industry healthier in this country? Is it easier to spread their work from here? I write in Basque from New York to the world. That's what I do. And being here, I am there. New technologies offer me the opportunity to be present in both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. I am still attached to the umbilical cord. I have never left the Basque country. To summarize, the way to build bridges between us is to work together with both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Give room to multi-identities. Take human values as a feature that identify Basques. Give visibility to our achievements. Share the treasure that we have, the Basque language. Let the Jews be our loudspeaker to the world and avoid confrontation. We are not against anyone.
We are just Basques. Are we going to go back to the Basque country like Grandpa, Grandpa Lorenzo and Grandpa Jose? I don't know. We are enjoying it for now. There is a lot to do in New York. And remember, the Basque country is not just in the Basque country. The Basque country is in the world. Let's get this